Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You can get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there, but bam, Loy Macedo is the best. All right, uh, in today's video, I'm going to give you my thoughts about what Narayan Murthy, who is the CEO, former CEO of uh, Infosys, was a billionaire. Okay, big guy. He's also the father-in-law of, uh, what's that guy's name? Rishi Sunak. So, very good, very influential guy. Now, he said something that sparked controversy, this 77-year-old guy. So, I'll give you my thoughts about what he said and why is everyone or most of the people pissed off about him and what do I think about it. Okay, in case you're new to my channel, my name is Lloyd Macedo. I'm a personal branding strategist. I help people get well-paying jobs in Dubai, UAE and also Saudi Qatar, Bahrain, Oman. People also book my services for coaching, consulting, for personal and professional issues, especially when they're confused or, you know, they don't want this uh, sweet sounding uh, cliche advice. They want something that is practical, doable and uh, different. And 7,000 videos. You can check it out. Okay. So I came to know about this from my WhatsApp group when uh, people started sharing screenshots. Okay. Screenshots on Twitter and all that. So it seems Naran Murthy, what he said is India's, uh, and uh, you can check the link. Uh, British, no, sorry, businesstoday.in, businesstoday.in. What it says here is um, Naren Murthy uh, says, India's work productivity is one of the lowest. Youngsters today should work 12 hours a day. And he said this uh, when speaking to former Infosys CEO Mohan Das Pai for a podcast. Okay. So you have to work 12 hours a day. And um, in some places, they said 70 hours a week or something like that. Okay. So the minute uh, he said this, obviously, people take screenshots, uh, you know, JPEG images. And there were also people responding in Twitter. And um, what um, my group, uh, one of my groups where, uh, especially, you know, I, I put this link where new people can join. So people said, yeah, he wants slaves. He wants slaves. He wants people to work like slaves. This is the slave mentality. Others said that uh, work for any other company other than Infosys. Some other people said that, why the hell should you work uh, 12 hours a day? Okay, you pay me per hour. Um, I'm okay with it. Uh, there was a guy who was, uh, you know, he, he was from India. Uh, he is from India. He moved to Dubai. And from Dubai, he went to Canada. And there he obviously gets paid per hour. He's like, uh, this is the modern system where you should be paid per hour. And after, um, and, you know, for those of you who do not know, in the West, if you work more than eight hours, you get paid 1.5 times more in some companies or cases. I don't know if it is everywhere. Okay. So what do I think about it? Now, before I answer that and uh, tell you my stance, um, I, I will, uh, I, I will state certain facts. This is reality, yeah, by the way. And feel free put your comments down below and let me know what you think. Say I'm 46 today. I'm 46. I was once upon a time a 16 year old, 20 year old young guy. I, you know, passed out of uh, school and then tried college. Didn't work out. So. When I started working, I was working for fun. I was working for enjoyment. I was not serious about my work. I'm, I'm telling you honestly how I was. At, um, at the age of 20, you know, from 16, I started to work, whether it was a bellboy, whether it was a, uh, you know, a cleaner, whether it was a waiter. I was called as a, they call it kamchor. Kamchor means... You do work, but you try to escape and you still want to get paid. 
So I like to be lazy. I like to enjoy myself. I my focus was all about girls. I wanted to have fun. I was waiting for work to get over so that I can be with my friend circle or whatever. So I was very much like a normal young man. Okay, I didn't want to work, and I'm telling you, I didn't want to work, and especially work hard. I hated it. In fact, when I started my career with Citibank as a sales executive, even there I was a calm chore. You would not believe I used to actually have a girlfriend in Citibank whom I used to give lovey-dovey and tell her to work for me. Like, can you go and pick up the application for me? Can you go and submit for me since you're passing by? And I would be lazy and this poor girl, I would make her work. I was so shameless. And uh, I was such a guy who believed that, yeah, I don't want to work out. I used to even have um, housewives who, no, not that I'm having an affair with them, housewives who would, I would pay them for every customer I would get. They just have to make calls and appointments. So I wanted to work as less as possible and get paid as much as possible. And uh, what was I doing? Uh, I was playing computer game, PC games. Those days it was Unreal Tournament, Age of Empires, uh, those kind of games. Okay, um, PC games. If you're a PC game lover, you know. Uh, so I like shoot him up games and all that. So I didn't want to go to work. And every day, my <laughs> my team leader, who was a lady from South India, she would call me up. You know, we are supposed to report to work at sharp 8. And at sharp 8, I'm hugging the pillow and sleeping. Uh, and she would go, where are you? She would... <laughs> <laughs> where are you? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm on the way. I'm on the way. And thankfully, I has to stay near the bank, um, a small private, small accommodation of a room. Um, but what I used to love doing after uh, working hours, because I used to work in Citibank as a sales executive, in the evenings I used to DJ for uh, Ajman Kempinski. Okay, I was an in-house DJ there twice a week, and. Um, on Thursday, Fridays, me and my friend that time, uh, he was working for Emirates Airlines. He had invested in a DJing set, you know, uh, Pioneer and uh, we had speaker systems, you know, uh, JBL uh, lights. So we used to do events like wedding parties, uh, wherever they would pay us a little bit of money. So I enjoyed doing that. Why? Because there were party, girls, music, center of uh, the life, you know, of the party. So I enjoyed doing all that. But I hated work. Oh man, I really hated work. I just didn't want to work. Okay, I'm, I'm being honest with you. And then, uh, obviously, uh, if you know, when I was young, I used to read self-improvement books. Tony Robbins and uh, those days, uh, when I was in my 20s, so you're talking 25 years ago, Tony Robbins was very famous. And uh, even uh, Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn is the father of self-improvement. And then uh, there was also this guy, uh, what is his name? Um, um, who ate, who ate, no, eat the frog, Brian Tracy. Yes, Brian Tracy. Okay. He is also another self-improvement speaker. There was uh, Les Brown. Okay. Uh, I just, that time the internet was just budding up and we could see uh, videos and, you know, that time there was what, Napster and Limeware where you could share these uh, pirated videos. So it was motivational. So as to say, uh, you must, uh, if you are into the self-improvement genre, you must listen to it. It's on YouTube. Les Brown, L-E-S-B-R-O-W-N, uh, Hungry. Just listen to that. That is, even today, it gives you goosebumps. You know, it was that powerful. So as to listen to all this. So uh, even though I was lazy, even though I didn't want to work hard, I wanted to be rich. I wanted to be successful. I wanted to have the girls, the money, the cars, uh, the big houses. And, you know, that time social media was not there. There was no Facebook, no Instagram. But I still had the vision that I would have expensive cars, expensive houses. As to say, you know, like a James Bond movie. Okay. So one day, I happened to listen to the, I think it was MP3 of... Uh, MP3 or the video of uh, Brian Tracy saying about work, okay, hard work and focus, discipline and all that he was talking, all the boring stuff that a youngster doesn't like. 
So in that video, he's wearing a suit and he is talking and he's saying, when you're working, this is exactly more or less his statements. I don't know if you can get the video, just share the link. So in this video, he's wearing a suit. He's always wear a suit. So he says, when you're working, you only work. You don't listen to music. You don't talk to your friends. You don't look at other things. You don't chit chat. You only work and you don't uh, walk around. You don't waste time. You only work. I was like, man, you're so bloody boring, man. This is so, it's rubbish. What only work? Don't talk to anyone. Don't speak to anyone. Put your head down and focus. And I was like, this is a crap advice. This is so boring. Seriously, that was my actual uh, reaction. I was like, who wants to do that kind of work? You know, when I was working, I was always fooling around with the girls. And in Citibank, out of 128 I think 128 uh, sales executives. I think 120 were uh, 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 girls, females. So I used to love chatting with the girls and women and married ladies. And you know, I just liked uh, chatting with them. I, I was very happy because I came from a very strict household. So now freedom, you know, all ladies, all uh, very happy. Okay. So, and I, I was always this character who was like, if you talk about work, I would not only talk about work, but then I talk about a movie, I would talk about uh, eating out, I would talk, I always lose talk, like you said. <coughs> so, I didn't believe in this ultra-focused work. And this continued, uh, in uh, th this was part of my DNA, I think until the age of, um, I'm not sure, until the age of when, but um, I would say that when I was a, when I took the role as an employee, I was lazy, I was a bum. But the minute I took the role as a leader or I was in charge of something, like I told you, I was DJing and emceeing events. Uh, I was the MC. You know, MC is a guy who speaks at a wedding or party and he takes charge of the event. Or when I was a DJ and I had to plan out something, there... I expected the highest standards. I would tell everyone, listen, I want this to come at this time. I was, you know, I was very disciplined. I had a checklist. I had a timing. There I was very ultra focused. But where it came to me being an employee or being a subordinate or being a team member, I was always like a calm chore, which I told you, lazy. So I think this continued for me until the age of, Seriously, huh? until the age of, uh, I think, nearly 36, that's quite a long time. I'm kind of ashamed to even say this, okay? In work, I'm talking strictly work. I'm not talking of areas where I loved. Where areas where I loved, like, uh, you know, bodybuilding or uh, marathon running, or triathlon, or even even trying to get girls, or I was very much, you know, you see these boxes at the top, right? Sometimes uh, in some of my videos, these are all trophies and certificates. I have 800 of them in public speaking, uh, presentations, awards. I was very, very disciplined. I would work 8 to 12 hours a day, total focused. Uh, I had the work ethic that nobody had, but that was all hobbies and interest. That was not work. That was not where I got paid money. Okay. And um, I, I guess it was because when I was working for someone else, I didn't feel that passion and drive. But the minute I felt I was working for myself and my career, I became a totally different human being. So where... No, I'll, I'll give you the mindset. So if I was working for, let's say, in Citibank, the more number of holidays, the more happy I was. If I was getting paid for eight hours of work, I would love to not go to office and get paid. It was that bad. In fact, I'd be very happy just to show my face and go home and sleep. Okay, that is when I was working for someone else. But when I was working for myself, my brand, what I was passionate about, like DJing, anchoring shows, um, 
even when I was running the gym business uh, for my mother, I didn't feel, I didn't feel I was working. I didn't feel that I was doing work per se. Like, for example, right now, the time is 2.16 in the morning. Okay, it's night. Um, it took me quite some time to get into the zone. And plus, I had a couple of things to do and plus client work. But I want, I really wanted to make this video. Now, just so that you know, some people think, oh, you get paid money by YouTube and you must be really getting pennies or, you know, or the dollar. Uh, YouTube is, I'm not doing YouTube for money. Whatever money I get is bonus. I'm not making these videos for money. It's part of my brand. My actual work where I act, where I make serious money is consulting, coaching, training, mentoring. Okay. So when I do this now, this is a hobby. Plus that is, I told you, that is my work at coaching, consulting. I take it very seriously, very, very, very seriously. And there is no day off. I'm, I'm telling you this. If you see my videos, I, I told you in my introduction, I have 7,000 videos. Do you know that I, I don't want to take a day off. I don't want to, even though I can take a day off, I can upload one video a day if I really want. But I say, no, I want to put three videos a day. Not even joking. People who are part of my groups know this, who know me for many years. I can put one video a day. I say, no, I'll put three videos a day. They say, why are you killing yourself, man? No, I'll still. And just so that you know, each video takes around one hour, two hours to make and edit and everything. And I'm not talking of the shooting time. I'm talking of the editing and all that. So it takes time. And, uh, uh, and I... Do it. And here's the funny thing. I do it even though I'm not getting paid because I love this. And where I get paid, that is priority. I will do that plus I will do this. Okay. And this kind of obsession to work, to be the best, uh, is not only in my brand, is not only in my work. I also do it when, whether I'm cleaning the house. I want you to watch this documentary. Uh, ants on a shrimp ants on a shrimp that documentary about a chef he, he runs the world's best restaurant and he's an award winning chef there's a waiting list of two years for his food you know forget the food the food is so perfect like if he were to make 10 dishes and there are 100 dots on that dish with a design all the 10 will look perfectly identical he even takes a ruler to measure like small bits, which nobody can see, but he can see. He's that obsessed. And forget the dishes that he makes. Even when he's cleaning his kitchen counter, he will put his eye to make sure every inch, every centimeter is spotless. He's that uh, crazy. He's that obsessed. You know, they say OCD. Uh, like, that is the kind of person I am. Okay. So even cleaning, even sorting things out, even when I serve or I offer my best to clients, I expect the highest standards from them. But now look at it. Here, here's a funny bit. The same guy who was lazy, who didn't believe in hard work, who hated all this. If anyone gave me a lecture about working hard and focus on, a, ah, even studying, I hated it. Just looking at the book and it's so bloody boring here. But today... At the age of 46, if I'm going to read a book and I have to read a book, let's say for work, everything will be switched off. No phone, no internet, no nothing. And I'll sit in one place, cup of coffee. Until I finish my target, I will not move. So I have, and I have ADHD. Huh? By the way, I have extreme. You can make out from my looks, my mannerisms, my speaking, the attention, you know, tattoos and all that. I don't give myself any reason. No excuse. ADHD, no ADHD. I don't give a damn. I'm still going to read it. I'm switching off the phone. I'm switching off everything. I will discipline myself. If I can't control myself, who the hell can control? What? Uh, I'm not going to take any medicines or anything to control myself. No. I have what it takes. I'm a bloody man here. Come on. You have to have that little bit of willpower where at least few hours you can't sit down. 
then what kind of man are you? So, I've evolved so much that when I look back and see Roy Macedo there, I'm like, fucking hell, man, I would never want to employ a guy like him in my life. But at the same time, given that I know myself, because that's me, I see so much of untapped potential. Now, what has this got to do with Narayan Murthy's uh, work 12 hours a day? See, it all comes down to your value system. One is your value system. One is your perception. Are you working for yourself or are you working for someone else? Now, you might say, oh, Loy, it's very easy for you to talk because you're working for your own brand, Loy Macedo, your own business, Loy Macedo. And guess what? When I was in Dublin, Ireland, and you you must have known this story if you watch all my videos. When I was in Dublin, Ireland, at the age of 21, uh, I married this Irish girl. It didn't work out. I was working as a cleaner. It's called domestic engineer. I was working eight hours a day, uh, five days a week, which is you're supposed to work and they pay you for that. I used to work after duty hours, eight hours a day, extra eight hours for free, eight hours, plus eight hours is 16 hours. And where we had to come for five days a week, I used to come seven days a week. And I was so obsessed about wanting to learn, grow, and climb up. Just man, I'm a domestic engineer. I'm supposed to be this cleaner, cleaner. Just go to the toilet and just see, okay, the mirrors. You know, when you go to a uh, theater. And there hardly people used to come. It's not like that dingy, dirty sewage, this thing. It was a very clean, like a five-star, this thing. In a shopping mall, hardly two or three people used to come. Uh per uh, movie or whatever, youngsters only during Saturday, Sunday, and they would have another team to do the cleaning. We just had to make it sparkle and smell nice. So I didn't want to be that for the rest of my life. And I took it on myself. I will learn these new skills to be better. Because I'm not doing this for them. It might look like, oh, he's working. See, other people looked at it. Oh, he's working eight hours for free for this company. They're not paying him. I didn't look at it that way. I looked at it as this extra eight hours I'm working, I'm learning new skills. So I was not just sweeping. I was teaching myself how they did uh, back office coordination, how they prepared food, how they served nachos, how they served uh, the drinks, the Pepsi and all that, how they went to the vendors, the suppliers, uh, uh, how they did the telemarketing. I was teaching myself and even though it looked like I'm working for them, I was learning on the job. And that is why in three months, I got uh, uh, I got my uh, some, uh, not only promotion, they give me extra bonus, whatever. But that was the attitude that helped me succeed. So it's not just my hobbies. Here I'm talking about being a cleaner. Okay. And that's how you rise to the top. And I know this through the hotel industry because I know so many people those days who started off as a waiter or a cleaner in a hotel, like a three-star or five-star hotel, and they climbed the ranks and became like the manager or uh, accounts manager, or in some cases, even the CEO of the hotel. So, see, if you're talking, I, I don't know about Infosys. I don't know how is the company, whether it's good, not good, whether they pay very bad salaries. I have no idea. But I can tell you one thing, don't work, don't have the attitude that you're working for somebody else. Have the attitude that you're working for yourself and learn and gain those skills that will help you become better, that your brand value will increase, that your demand will increase, that you learn new skills where in a year or two years of busting your ass, you get a job promotion that none of your colleagues will get. See, he says work 12 hours a day. I'll say work 16 hours a day, man. 8 hours, then work extra eight hours. And you don't need to work in the same department. Maybe you can work in another department. I would work for another department for free. I'm, I'm being very honest. I've done this. Why? Because I want to learn a new skill. I want to be competitive. And remember, your colleagues are not your friends. Your friends that you hang out with also are not your friends. They're just time-pass people 
who are just in that journey and as you if you climb up or any one of them climbs up they will break off relationships and set new standards of friends and relations so you ask yourself what do you want see i'm not saying that you must work hard it's up to you 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 want to there are some people who say no i just want to work smart okay what is smart work one hour a day fine work one hour a day work half an hour a day work one minute a day some people are saying oh there are billionaires and millionaires i can assure you this much this is my open challenge to you there's not a single successful rich person who became rich without hard work and by hard work i'm talking of hard core hard work okay one of my one of the toastmasters speakers toastmasters is a organization for leadership and communication non profit one of the world champions his name is dave ross he became my friend later on in um uh, facebook but when i was young uh, same in my 20s and when he just won the world championship um he gave one of his in his speeches he said i will never let anyone out prepare me or out work me and that struck in my head and that's how i took competitive speaking i will never let anyone out prepare me you can be more talented than me you can be smarter than me you can be more educated but hard work i will never let anyone work harder than me i will challenge i will kill myself at work you know i i know some of his hey that is not life yeah you should have a balanced life you should have your girlfriend you should have your family you should have movies this that, that i'm not saying you're wrong again listen to what i'm saying I'm not saying you're wrong you're right you're right for you but if you want to succeed if you want to grow if you want to make a difference to your life if you want to survive in a era of competitiveness cutthroat competition and the challenging dynamics of a changing market you need to bust your ass boss show me one olympian a guy who is training in olympics show me one professional fighter who is like a world champion show me anyone who succeeded who has achieved greatness who has said no work less you'll say oh, i don't want to be a world champion who the hell wants to be a world champion fine fine like i said right for you but i can assure you this forget the world champion even if you want to get a promotion to being a manager there also you have to work you might say oh office politics he kisses ass yes even kissing ass is work i know like i've given you one example of uh, a guy that i knew after office hours he was busy taking his bosses and seniors out for dinners and pubs and this and that and that was work that was not fun and he was listening to them and yeah he was networking and that's how i'm telling you he at my age he's already become a ceo of a company he's getting very good money very very good money and he has played his cards very right kiss ass keep happy give gifts whatever see whether you are in sales whether you are in engineering whether you are in any discipline on this planet if you work your ass off and you upgrade your skills your knowledge your expertise and try to become a better version of yourself you will succeed but remember i know i know some of you will say ah oh, what about a laborer who works in the sun or someone who's working in the rice field yeah there you are just doing the same thing over and over again but if you learn new skills new techniques gain more information more knowledge more expertise more tools if you have more tools in your arsenal you will succeed boss it's like one guy knows only accounts and accounts is all he knows but another guy knows accounts logistics marketing sales different different departments different skills he makes himself so valuable to the management the management will bloody notice and i can ass- i i can tell you this for a fact there is no ceo there is no owner of any company if he sees someone really working hard means with that drive and not like a donkey like just doing the report or typing typing no who's a leader who has the personality of a champion he will pick him 
why do you think so many ceos always chose me even with all these stat moves and these gimmicks and this nonsense because they saw the fire so this is all i can tell you but like i said if you feel you should not work hard you should work smart like the i i i this new generation has work smart they will take some photograph or they'll i i see these videos sometimes they will take a video of some guy with six pack abs or girl who looks sexy and all that and going to the gym and oh i work smart i work smart i just work two hours and then i go to the gym i go to the spa i go to the beach baba that is not life that is bullshit okay if you are really really uh, you know doing well you don't have to advertise to the world this especially these youngsters no they just want to show that oh i'm better than everyone else and they make it a point to make a video oh i quit my 9 to 5 job to find myself to live a balanced life i couldn't take stress i couldn't take pressure shut the fuck up man and these are all kids huh, who are looking for attention and likes and comments and and there you if you read the comments all like birds of the feather flock together oh exactly i felt what is the point of working and you're so brave and i want to come down to thailand and bali and vietnam and that is not life boss that's why you you'll only see this 20 30 20 year olds talk like this nonsense but you'll never see anyone in their 40s and 50s because your priorities changes your expenses increase your life is different you're no longer a single uh boy man or woman who can sleep around with 10 partners and travel the world alone and not keep relationships and friends and just have fun and party and booze and as you grow older your priorities will change and remember this just keep this sentence in mind huh? working earning money is a privilege i'm i'm telling you again keep this in mind working and earning money is a privilege ask anyone in gaza syria africa ask the people in these poor countries they can't even work to earn and i can assure you if any one of them was given an opportunity to work and really make money you would be slogging their ass off and making money and that's exactly what i'm doing i look at my life as a gift where i can work and make money so i agree with narayan murthy uh his words resonate with what i believe in but i understand i'm also telling you i understand when someone says na this is working like a slave working like a dog yeah because your perception is you're not working for yourself you're working for him so figure out a way how you can work for yourself develop yourself work smart and hard and where you climb the ranks and if you're still not able to succeed get yourself a mentor a coach or a senior level ceo to guide you or uh, someone like me find out there are many others career coaches or whatever whomsoever you resonate with and get a get to know what is your drawback you sometimes you yourself will not know what is your drawback you need someone to tell it on your face there are so many people who when they come to me they think they are perfect they think i have worked so hard i am so focused why am i not succeeding and then when i tell them on their face man this is where you are a fucking idiot you don't know how to talk you don't know how to network you don't know how to write you don't know you don't have a personality you you dress up like a fool you look like one they're like what the boss someone needs to tell you on your face and they get shocked because they they assume that they are perfect see if you're not climbing up na if you're not growing at least every 2 years or every year if you're not prog- progressing it's because of you not because of the world stop giving these excuses you made a choice you made a choice to work there you made a choice to be in that country you made a choice to do that course to do that career you made a choice nobody is putting a knife to your neck or a gun to your head and saying do this work do this work no you'll say oh no if i resign i don't have anything else so slog your ass off take proper guidance professional guidance and have a target no i work with people who achieve results not everyone succeeds to the highest level 
but from where they are when i when they really put their heart and soul you see progress that is why if you see any anybody who takes a professional coach in a gym or one to one you'll always see progress when they have a professional coach whether it's a film actor doing a acting role from fat guy to thin guy or muscular guy or we see you know many of them like amir khan in uh, gajni or uh, what is that movie uh, dangal which is a must watch movie if you uh, like inspirational movies or rithik roshan he is another uh, film actor indian uh, or even chris hemsworth or the any of the avengers the avengers no the movie how do you think they got into this amazing shape they got a private coach they you will say oh they have the money my dear stop giving these fucking excuses yeah stop when will you stop these excuses when i was penniless on the streets i borrowed money begged i was even ready to steal i was even ready to sleep with someone for money uh, really not joke so that i could get mentored so that i could learn from the best and i'm not saying i'm a great example but the very fact that 2011 my youtube video where i was going to commit suicide because i was penniless homeless nothing i had to where i'm today it's because of the fire that is there within so you decide whether you want to work hard or you decide whether you want to have a balanced life but end of the day don't cry if you don't have enough money if your life is not where it's supposed to be or you have not reached that point where you're proud of yourself don't blame anyone blame yourself take personal responsibility and say i it's me it's me i take responsibility for where i am then fine that's all i want to say you let me know your thoughts whether you agree or disagree i would love to know what you have to say and uh, feel free comment down below all right good bad ugly always love to read your comments this means signing off you guys take care